Hey there everybody, my name is Gabe and I design 3D printable action figures. In this mini tutorial, we're going to model a basic ball joint in Fusion 360. Ball joints are sort of the basic building block for an action figure, so I figure it's a good place to start a little tutorial series. We're going to model this segment here. It has a ball on one end and a socket on the other. You could print two of them, connect them together, and you're like halfway to an action figure right there. So let's jump in. I'm going to start a new design. I'm going to save it. I'm going to call it ball joint. Now before I even get into sketching, I'm actually going to go to modify, drop that down and go to change parameters. So if you haven't worked with parameters before, they're actually really useful. You can basically set stuff up in here that you know you might want to change later or reference later. And then rather than going back and digging up the original sketch that you did something in and editing it directly, you can just change the parameter in this menu. And if you set things up right uh, in your modeling process, it will just update the model on the fly with the uh, new parameter value. So I'm just going to click this little plus to create a new one. And the only parameter that I'm actually going to set up is length. That's going to be the length of the segment that we're making from, you know, joint to joint. Uh, let's set that to a length of 15. So now that that's done, now I can get into sketching. So I'll create a sketch. I'll do it on the, you know, XY plane. And I'll jump right in and create a line. Start from the origin. And actually, as I'm stretching this out, now I can type in length. And now that's set to be length. So just create a, a vertical line like that with the length of length. And now I'm going to put the ball on one end, socket on the other. Let's start with the ball. So I have the circle tool. Click at the end there. I'm going to do a diameter of six millimeters. And then on the socket end, the outer diameter is going to be nine millimeters. The inner diameter is going to be 5.8. So what that's going to do is if this is 6 millimeters and it goes into a socket that's 5.8, there's going to be a little bit of interference. So that's going to put a little bit of squeeze on the joint and make it, you know, basically a firm connection rather than something that can flop around. Uh, that interference is also why we can't really do these as print in place joints like I know everyone would like. So with that done, real quick, I'm just going to grab the line tool again. I'm going to extend this one up, extend this one down, just because I know I'll need those lines later. Zooming in on the socket, I need to create basically the opening. So I'll do two more lines here. And I want these lines to be basically symmetrical across this line. So there's actually a constraint for that. I'll go up into the constraints section pick symmetry, click one, two, and then I want them to be across this line. So now, no matter how I edit these, they're always going to be centered on that middle line. Next, I'll dimension the actual angle between them. So go to sketch dimension or hit D. Go between those two and my magic number for this is 112.5 degrees because that's the first number that I tried and it worked, so I didn't change it. That's three years ago at this point. Okay, so that's basically everything for the socket, everything for the ball, and now we need the segment that connects them. So we'll go back into the line tool, start on the socket end, just kind of pick a point, come up and over to the center, and then one more segment for the neck here. Um, just make sure that you don't pick this midpoint here um, that little triangle means it's the midpoint. So just, just go over a little bit. Go up there. We'll set the right dimensions in a minute. Uh, and now I want those on both sides so I can go up to the mirror tool that's in the create menu. Click one, two, three segments that I want to mirror. And then click mirror align. And that's going to be the middle. Hit OK. And now these, again, they're constrained to always be symmetric with each other. You know, doing the mirror command creates that constraint, which is nice. I'm uh, going to go back and dimension these now. 
So the little neck that connects to the ball end, I want that to be three millimeters across. The main segment, I want that to be five millimeters. That can really be whatever you want, but I, I think that five works. And then the length from the center of the ball to basically the end of the neck, we'll make that four and a half. And that's because it's gonna fit into something that's nine millimeters around. Half of that for clearance is four and a half, if that makes sense. So now I think I have everything I need in this sketch. So we'll finish the sketch. Let's start turning this into a solid model. So first I wanna do the ball, the rounded ball, that's a revolve. So I'll click these two profiles. Uh, I don't need to click the ones on the other side and actually I can't because that would break the tool. So just those two on the one side and then pick the axis of the center line. Can do that as a full revolve because I want it to go all the way around. That's gonna give me the ball at the end and the little neck that attaches to it. I want that to be cylindrical. Next, what I wanna do is bring back that sketch because I'm not done with it. So open the sketch, drop down, click the eyeball, bring that sketch back. Now I wanna make kind of the main body of it. So that's gonna be an extrude. Click these profiles, not these because that's sort of where the opening for the ball joint is. And then I want this to be going both sides. So I'm gonna make this a symmetrical extrude. Um, and then I want it to be five millimeters total, but actually that means I need to pick whole length in the measurement because that'll make it be five millimeters total rather than five millimeters in each direction. So we'll pick whole length, make sure this is set to join. So everything is gonna join into one body with what's already there. That looks good. Now I need to do another revolve to cut out the actual socket section. So I'll grab a revolve. I want this profile in here, but it won't let me click it directly because there's a body in the way. So easiest thing to do is just click and hold. That'll bring up this little drop down and now I can click profile. That selects that specific profile. That's what I want to revolve. Again, pick axis. I can pick really anything on this center line and it'll, it'll work. So I'll just pick this one because it's easily accessible. That's gonna now cut out that uh, that socket area. So I think I have everything I need from this sketch. What do I need to do now? Well, this opening here is a little too small for this neck to actually fit in. So that would limit the range of motion. I want to open that up a little bit. I'm going to do that with a chamfer. So I'm going to go up to the chamfer tool, come down, click those two. I'm going to chamfer that to one millimeter. Again, all these numbers are just kind of what I've tried over the years and what worked best for me. They're not set in stone. You can experiment, but again, we're just doing what works for me right now. Uh, what else do I need to do? Well, this is going to be printed on a 3D printer and it's gonna be printed in roughly this orientation. So basically this face is gonna to be touching the build plate, but if I look at it from the side, this ball is a problem because it sticks down below what I want to be the bottom of the part. And that sphere is not gonna stick in place. So I need to cut off a little bit of this ball is the moral of that story. There are a few different ways to do that. What I actually like to do is go up to modify again and get the split body tool. If that's not up on the toolbar, you can just drop this down again, click split body. So body to split, is going to be the only body that I have and then splitting tools I'm going to pick this bottom face make sure that extend is on and hit OK so what this is now done is I can look into the bodies and see okay it's split into this body and this body right two different parts now that still left this body in place it didn't actually get rid of it so now I need to get rid of it uh, how do I do that? Well, I could just hide it, but I know I don't need it anymore, so I should probably like actually get rid of it. But if I go over and just hit delete, it's going to warn me. It's going to say, hey, if you 
Well, what this basically is saying is if you delete this, I'm going to forget about it. And anything that relied on it in the past is probably going to break because you've, you've basically just erased it from all of history. And we don't want to erase it from all of history. We want this history here to still work. And that depends on that body actually still existing. So what we need to do is actually go to this. We can right click it and hit remove. So what that did, it got rid of it. It's no longer in that list, right? It's still there or it's, it's not there. Um, but it created an actual feature in the timeline where that thing got taken out. It's now remembering that it did exist and then I took it out and I can actually go down and suppress this feature and it'll come back. So this is really important for parametric modeling where you need a history where it actually remember, remembers what you did in the past in case you want to go back and edit it. Anyway, that's my rant on that. So this is basically functionally complete, right? You could export this now and 3D print it and it would work. You'd be able to connect a couple together and be well on your way. Um, there are a few things that I like to do to kind of improve things. First of which is this little sharp corner here. I don't really like it kind of gets in the way of the range of motion. So I just go ahead and, and grab a fillet, click that edge, and all of the mirrored equivalents of it. Fillet that by one millimeter, and that just rounds out that corner and gives me a little bit more range of motion. Don't have to do that, but why not? Next thing I like to do is I've noticed that when I try and print something like this, where it has this cylindrical neck. When this prints, it has to do a little bit of a bridge to get across that, right? And if it's rounded out like this, usually it's gonna do like one layer or what one line on the first layer. And then on top of that, it's gonna do more. And sometimes it just, it just doesn't print all that pretty. You know, it's so tiny that you probably would never notice it, but I've just noticed that it prints a little bit better when I flatten this out just a little bit. So to do that, I'm just gonna do a quick extrude, which needs a sketch. So I'll pick this plane here, this side plane, and I want this sketch to be basically be attached to this face. So I can do that with a project. So I go into create, project include, project. I think this P is the default shortcut for this. That's what I usually use. And I'll just click this cylindrical face and hit OK. And basically what that did is now that specific fe feature has been linked to the sketch. And if this feature were to ever move, um, because, you know, I changed that parameter and the length changed, this sketch would come with it, which is, again, a big part of parametric modeling is just making sure that things move where you want them to move if you have to move them. So to set up the part that we actually want to cut away, I'm going to grab the line tool, zoom in, come across the bottom, and then just do a little bit offset from that. Dimension between those is just going to be 0.2 millimeters. It's barely anything, but again, it's just something that I've noticed helps a little bit. So I do it. Finish that sketch, do another extrude, it's already selected that profile. Again, I want this one to be symmetric and I can just set the extent type to all to make sure that I cut away everything I need to cut away. Hit okay. Now that's flattened out the way I like it. Very nice. Last thing I'm gonna do is what we always love doing in 3D printing, which is just putting chamfers on everything, right? Chamfers, fillets, we, we love just adding extra features to stuff. So, I'm just going to do a quick aesthetic fillet on everything, or chamfer actually. Uh, the nice thing about fusion is that you can pick these lines through the part, right? I can pick that edge without actually flipping it around to see it. That's a nice time saver. I'm just going to chamfer these by 0.5. That looks pretty nice. That looks like a part. That looks like something I could make a 
action figure out of. Let's go ahead and save that. We're not ashamed of that. Oh, hey, what I, you know what I should show you is, remember that parameter that we set up? So let me pull that back up. And I used my shortcut to pull that up, but again, that's in modify, change parameters. There we go. So here's my part, here's my parameter. If I change that, let's say I want it to be 20 actually. Oh, hey, look, everything updated nicely. I didn't have to go look back. Oh, I think it's in this sketch and uh, okay, it's this number. Let me edit that and no, all I had to do was just change one parameter and it'll do, it'll update everything because I set it up knowing that that's something that I might update. I will set up a parameter for anything that I know I might want to tweak later. So a lot of times it is a length. If I want to change proportions on a figure, I'm like, oh, I might want his arm to be a little bit longer later. So I'll just set up a parameter for the arm length and I'll just be able to edit that on the fly later rather than dig back through or you know, width, depth, anything that I think I might want to change later is the moral of that story. Anyway, this is done. We can export this, we can go put them together. We are now at the part of the video where I ask you to leave a comment letting me know what you want to see in the next tutorial. And I ask you to subscribe so that you can see it and ring the bell and leave a like, give to charity, hug your dad, save the whales, so on and so forth. So go do all that and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.